Hey guys, welcome back to yet another episode of the Real Estate Agent Development Podcast. I'm your host, Corey Malvo, and today we have a very special guest joining us. So whether you're watching on YouTube or you're tuning in through your favorite podcast app, you're in for a treat. Our guest today is none other than Will Higgins. He's a successful real estate agent based out of sunny Southern California. Will is the mastermind behind the YouTube channel, Who's Next? Helping Agents Close More Deals. This is where he shares invaluable trainings and insights designed to help real estate agents thrive in this competitive industry. With a strong following on Instagram, Will also gives us a glimpse into his daily life, showing us the hustle and dedication it takes to succeed. In today's episode, we'll dive into Will's journey, explore his content creation strategies, and uncover the secret behind his success. So whether you're a seasoned agent or just starting out, this episode is packed with tips and inspiration that you won't want to miss. So grab a notebook, get comfortable, and let's get into the conversation with Will. All right, man. So I'm, I'm really excited because this is my first ever this is my first ever stream yard, kind of like one of these virtual type podcast episodes, man. And I'm really excited yes, and I appreciate it on man i i'm a big fan of your youtube channel uh which was recently rebranded but i did find you as will higgins on youtube and i watched a bunch of your videos man i binged your videos and then i reached out to you and you were probably the the, the person who's responded back to me the quickest out of anyone i've ever reached out to. and so i do appreciate that i appreciate you coming on man so we got will higgins here on the podcast man. i'm excited to have you uh just talking to you for you know 15 20 minutes it feels like we have a lot in common man it feels like we have a lot in common and and the people who watch my channel you know it's a real estate channel but it's really kind of kind of based on content creation and and uh videography um photography and you know stuff like that so um you seem like you're a master of all those things as well so i'm excited to get into the uh into the conversation man but first i wanted to kind of explain to the audience um kind of like your backstory and, and, and how you got started. Cause I know you said that you worked for the, the, uh, the railroad, which is, which is yeah. interesting. That was a come up and that was Ashley to classy right there. <laughs> Ashley to classy, <laughs> you know, every time I tell people I worked at the railroad, they, they actually think I was like swinging a hammer or like driving the trains. <laughs> I wasn't doing that. Yeah. I was doing sales. So there are salespeople at the railroad. I imagine you looking like the, the dude from Mary Poppins, the chimney sweeper. And you're just walking around, soot all over you, man. You just like, I also imagine it's like 1930. Like you're just working on the railroads like 1930. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, it was it was nothing like that. It was actually pretty cool, man. My job was more uh, relationship management, man. So I took people to Laker games, Clipper games, uh, you name it. It was mainly just entertaining, dude. So it's basically it's basically a lot like, you know, any other sales job, like almost yeah. like real estate. Yeah, so it, it did, was it was it was a hundred percent transferable to real estate, dude. And that's why I, I did so well. So that's a question. Did you take anything with you from the railroad into real estate? Of course, man. Um, we did a lot of sales training, and that's that's another thing that I did not realize. So if anybody's watching and they're in a corporate job, you know, maybe they're doing real estate part-time right now, because a lot of us do start out part-time they pay for your training. When you get here, you have to invest in yourself and pay for your training. So um, I'm glad they provided a lot of training. I probably wish that I would have took that training a little more serious, you know, but um, that was one of the things that I really took over was a lot of the sales training. They had a CRM, uh, client management, follow up, all that stuff transferred 100%, except for here, you know, I could make more money doing it. <laughs> it's kind of like the uh, Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, where he says that you should get a job for experience, not to get a job, not get the job for the money. And that's kind of Correct. what you did, man. Ended up getting some good experiences that you could take with you. Um, so let's talk a little bit about your content strategy. Um, uh, I guess I should talk about your YouTube first, man. What what got you started in on, on thinking about making that YouTube channel? And I think you have two channels, but I wanted to, to solely uh, focus on the one right now, which is the one that you just rebranded. Um, yeah. Kind of, kind of. What, what made you, what made you start that channel, and 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 uh, kind of what drives you each day? I think that you, it sounds like you just want to help agents. Again, yep. we have a lot in common. You know, yeah, dude. So it it goes back to what I found joy in. So as we do real estate, as you become more successful, as you sell a lot of sell a lot of homes, you figure out one thing when you sell a lot of homes. You figure out if you like selling a lot of homes, you know? So um, I sold a lot of homes, 
but I found that I got more joy out of helping other agents get their first transaction or get transactions. You know what I mean? Because, you know, nothing against clients. We love them. We need them. But a lot of times they aren't the most grateful for the help, you know, and I'm a big relationship guy. And once you close that deal, um, they act like they don't know you until it's time to do another deal. And for me, I, I got more joy out of helping the agent because by helping the agent be successful, guess what? They could help their family and there's a ripple effect. You know what I mean? And they'll never mm -hmm. forget that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, man. So that, and that that kind of brings us to the name of your channel. Who's next? You know, yep. isn't that the name of it? Um, That's the name, dude, because so I went to uh, I went to a conference. Um, I went to the Think Media conference right on on YouTube. So that's no, that's another uh, uh, another gym, guys. If you're interested in whatever you're interested in, start going to those conferences. Like, don't just do everything in real estate, because I, I met more people there, you know, and also I met realtors there that I had more more in. in um uh, a greater connection with more in common with because to the average realtor, and you probably experienced the same thing, Corey, you don't have much in common with the common realtor because we're actually marketers that just happen to be real estate agents. You know what I mean? So yeah, there aren't many realtors that I can have a conversation with. I like to nerd out. But when I go to events like this and then I meet other realtors, it's like, oh my God, like we need to be in each other's world. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely, so, man. I agree with so that. With, with, yeah. So with that being said, with the channel, um, you want mass appeal, but also I, I, I need you to think about I start with the end in mind. And I thought about who my consumer was or who I wanted to reach. And it was the agent. And what does every agent think about? Like, and this is how I started in the morning. In the morning, when I got to my desk, I would first I would ask myself, who's next? Right. And I would look through all of my leads and the people that were that I can get into escrow the, the soonest, that's who I will focus on that day. So that's why I named the channel Who's Next. Who's Next, helping agents close more deals, right? <clears throat> um, and it's funny because, you know, in, I know in my my career, you know, you go through those slumps, especially when you first starting out and you're like, man, when, when's my next when's my next deal coming? Like, who's, yep. who's next? And then all who's of a sudden, next? a week later, you got like six or seven pending and you're like, oh, yeah. You know, so yeah, it, it, that is top of mind, man. Um, so why don't we talk a little bit, a little bit about? I guess you just kind of nailed on on your rebranding, why you did the rebranding, because it used to be a real estate. It was just called Will Higgins before, right? Yep. Yeah. 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 So I uh, I wanted to grow, and again, it was start with the end in mind. So with that being said, I needed to start with you know how I'm going to monetize, who who I'm actually trying to help, and what's relevant to to that. Um, that base. Right. So that's basically why I, I rebranded it, because uh, it's not until you really niche in that you really start to grow. Absolutely, man. So what type of content has been kind of the most successful on your channel? Yeah, so it's in content creation. Um, I think it's just like real estate, right? Like everything works, but you just have to find out what works for you. And I've come to the realization that in order to grow, especially in the environment where we're in with AI, with there's people that have been doing it much longer than you, right? I feel like you have to experiment, but you have to take massive action in a short amount of time. So I'm just throwing crap at the wall, but I'm just doing it <laughs> at a higher pace than most people. So I'm failing more than most people. And through that, I feel like I'm getting the feedback, the data in order to make the content better. Which is kind of funny, man, because we're in completely different states. I'm in Minnesota. You're in LA. I still found you, man. I still watch all your yep. videos. So yeah, so exactly. Uh, so uh, what, uh, you know, like what, um, like, how do you decide on your topics? Like you said, you're just throwing spaghetti at the wall, but I mean, your topics still seem to be pretty high quality. So, so how are you deciding on, on your topics? Yeah. So I'm, I'm consuming a lot more. Um, I'm consuming a lot more YouTube myself, but also you're most qualified to help the person you were. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking about, I'm going back in time and I'm thinking about, uh, obstacles. I'm thinking about things that were important to me. I'm thinking about things that would be important to a new agent or somebody aspiring to do this or do that. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm just trying to, or I'm thinking about the, the roadblocks or the, the mistakes I've made, and I'm trying to educate people so that they don't have to 
you know, do those things. And that that's what's starting to work. You know, it's kind of funny, man, because there's been times where I'm like, man, I got the greatest idea for a topic and I'll put together the video and then mm -hmm. I'll put it out there and it'll get like no views. And then, yep. you know, my, my video that kind of launched my channel was a, a, a video where I basically showed people how to create a real estate walkthrough video on my phone, just on my iPhone. And I created the video in like two hours and I just thought of the idea like 20 minutes before I created it. And that one took off. And so it, you, I don't really know if there's a rhyme or reason to it outside of, you know, you should probably do some keyword research and figure out like kind of what people are looking for. But, you know, just starting out on YouTube, I'm just like, what's a good idea? Like you said, you know, you're always, you know, um, you know, better suited to help the person that you once were. So that's kind of how I was doing it, too. I was like, what's a good idea? What would help me? What would help me when I was new? And I'm just putting them out there and some stuff is hitting and some stuff isn't hitting. Um, yep. And, and it's trial say, and error. Yeah, it, it's trial yeah. and error. And when you when you find something that works, make another one. Yeah, yeah. That's what I've been doing. Well, it's kind of funny, man, because on my channel here, and I'm sure some of the viewers have watched these videos, but I, you know, I put together that video I just told you about, and I was getting a lot of subscribers from that video, a lot of views from that channel, and I was or from that video, and I was trying a lot of different things, and you know, the other stuff wasn't getting that same type of, uh, you know, that same type of love as that first video. So then I put out a part two to the first video, and then that one took off, and it was like two and a half years later. And so it, yep. that proves that proves that you should pay attention to that sort of thing. Um, have you been able to leverage YouTube at all in your personal real estate business, like lead acquisition uh, type of stuff? Because I know you have a second channel for that. Yes, yes, definitely, definitely. So on this channel, again, you always have to think about how you monetize. Yeah. So I've actually monetized more on this channel than on the real estate channel. So I have not closed a deal yet from the real estate channel, but I have gotten leads, you know, so I have people in my funnel and my pipeline, but you know, I'm really not being as consistent on that channel. Now on this channel, yes, I'm, uh, I've definitely monetized, but I monetize a couple of different ways. As you know, um, you know, I run a, a, a nationwide, basically real estate sales group sales team. So people anywhere in the country, anywhere in the world can partner with me and join my group. So through that, through this channel, people are actually reaching out all the time to join. So I've had some really great agents join from the channel. I know that I was just listening to a Think Media thing and Sean Cannell was talking about how, you know, he knows agents that have gotten, you know, millions of dollars in leads from channels that are small. They got like, you know, 2000 <laughs> subscribers or something like that. So when it comes to the super niche real estate market you know like if you're an agent trying to, to start a channel that's just there to generate leads in your local market those channels don't need to be big they just need nope. to they just need to rank so like if someone says like i want to buy a house in la what's the top restaurants in la or top neighborhoods in la you know will higgins should pop up if those people are putting in those types of searches you know but they don't right. you don't need to have ten thousand subscribers <laughs> or whatever which you know which would still be considered a fairly small youtube channel they don't need to be huge yeah. And, and, and it, I think it goes deeper than that as well, because right now, you know, I don't, I don't know how many realtors are, are in your market, but it's probably at least, you know, three, four thousand. Would you yeah, say it's a lot? It's a lot for yeah. sure. So it's probably three, four thousand. But what um, there's a quote out there is just like when you go the extra mile, right, the competition basically dissipates. Well, with that mm -hmm. being said, there's probably less than 10 realtors on YouTube. So now you went from 4,000 people you're competing with, with, now it's only 10. Yes, it is funny, man. There's not a lot of agents in my local market on YouTube, but there is a few. There's a few that yeah. are doing a really good job. And they uh, dominate. Like in the city. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, one thing I've struggled with a little bit, like I do a great job on social media, putting out content, and that's why my channel's done so well, me teaching that sort of thing. But I will mm -hmm. say that my, you know, and it could be just the region that I'm in, the hyper local region that I'm in. But you've done a really good job of, uh, you know, getting followers on Instagram. And I've just noticed from going through your Instagram feed, I'll put it on the screen so other people can see it, um, that you just do a really good job of bringing people into your business. It seems like every event you go to, I don't know if you got a guy following you around with a camera or something like that. You know, yeah, what I mean, we do. Um, <laughs> uh, I need that. Um, you know, you have, uh, you know, like you put out a video on YouTube the other day and it was about, you know, one of the AI features that you use in a and uh, on YouTube. And then you also put out a reel the next day that lists your top five uh, AI, uh, you know, AI right. things or apps that you use. So, you know, it seems to be a little bit integrated. And and, you know, for me on my 
on my Instagram channel, I kind of, I kind of leave it for lead acquisition and I try to be really specific to my market and stuff like that mm -hmm. on Instagram. Um, but I have noticed a lot of people see success when they start integrating, like, this is also what I do. I also train agents to do these things, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you start putting that stuff on your Instagram. So, um, what's your content strategy for Instagram? So a couple things, man, one, one, you have to come to the realization that you are more than just a realtor and selling homes doesn't define you and you're not in a box. Okay. That's the issue with a lot of realtors. They, they, especially right now when the business isn't plentiful, they go into hiding because they're, um, who they are is wrapped up in how many homes they sell. Mm -hmm. And I had to disconnect from that. And once I disconnected from that, I gave myself permission to post about other stuff, you know, post about content creation, just be able to show up, you know? So mm -hmm. for me, my content strategy right now, it everything comes together once you start with the end in mind. Right. Mm -hmm. So I have my monetization strategy. I have my goals and those that monetization strategy, those goals, they flow on every platform. So it allows me to be cohesive because I already know what the end goal is. Right. So I posted that video about Taja because I have an affiliate with Taja. Right. Mm -hmm. And they pay like nine bucks a month per, per person. And then mm -hmm. I have an affiliate with Opus and then I have affiliate with um go high level. Right. So mm -hmm. I'm going to promote those on every channel. So I'm, I'm just promoting those and, uh, uh, showing the world what I'm using to put out content. And I found mm -hmm. that's what people want. They want to go along the journey with you. So I'm just taking them along with me. So what I picked up there was you're not just an age, you're not just an agent. It's not all about the amount of homes you sell, but then you kind of mentioned where you have other sources of income. So Correct. I guess, yeah, I guess that kind of segues to what is your kind of like, what is your monetization strategy as it pertains to just YouTube and really yeah. any of the social medias? Cause we haven't really touched on that. I know that, you know, we talk about Google AdSense revenue and we all know that that's not, you know, any way to get rich. It's nice supplemental income. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But there's other, there's other ways to make money on your channel. So what is your strategy for that? Correct. So uh, the main one, it's recurring, right? So you want to get people to recurring. So recurring is when people join my real estate organization. Um, it's more just like YouTube pays, you know, 55 percent back to um, the creators. My real estate platform does the same thing. So they pay um, kind of like a affiliate fee or referral fee, they share in the revenue. So that's one monetization strategy, right? When people join and uh, partner with me, then I give them more one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, so that's a revenue stream. The other is affiliate links. So all of the great you know, products and systems I use, essentially mm -hmm. all those people will pay you affiliate links. And now I'm growing my mailing list and we're going to segue that into a um a paid community and mm -hmm. then also we're gonna we're gonna implement courses so that's so, my so, strategy i love that so when you talk about building an email list you know typically you offer something out for free and yep. you know typically if somebody orders or you know buys or, or requests your free item a lot of time those people will be your first customers so that's kind of the, the idea behind it so what are the platforms that you use for um yeah, I guess both of it creating your e it's an ebook, right? Um, yep, ebook. Yep. So yeah, so I, I use I used Canva to create that, but everything I do goes through uh, the custom CRM I built. I call it Dealmaker, and it mm. just kind of goes with the channel, right? So everything goes through Dealmaker. It does everything. It has my courses. It has my um, my membership group. It has my funnels. Like literally everything is in there. So that's that's how really my, how, do you, how do you build a custom CRM? I'm a nerd. <laughs> Jeez, dude. Uh, i'm a nerd like that's yeah, that's man. that's when i knew i was more than a realtor that's when i knew i i had to to get out of the traditional real estate because i'm multifaceted right like i i enjoy other stuff and most people um, don't even know how to use a crm let alone build right. a crm right so yeah man so that's 
yeah, so that's but that's that, that that's what I enjoy doing. And I think you just have to find uh, what you enjoy and what you're passionate about. And then once you do that, it doesn't feel like work. So the long hours and um, the long nights, it, just, it, it, it doesn't matter. So do you have an example of, you know, like, you know, you just mentioned it doesn't feel like work. So, you know, you're just out, you know, doing your normal things, showing homes, out to dinner with your family, whatever. Um, you said you had a guy with a camera that follows you around. I assume he's not there for 100 percent of your day. You know, how do you integrate that content into your day? Like, what's, what's a good example of, you know, you pulling out your phone or your your DJI Osmo Pocket 3 and shooting something? Yeah. So, you know, I have to get better at that. So that's where I'm, I'm moving more to the to the vlog content because I, I, I do try to be present. But um, here's the thing. We uh, me and one of my me and one of my business partners, we have a saying and it's uh, it's give them the show. Right. Like everybody want to watch. Right. Like everybody, everybody wants to watch. So we have this saying that we say, give them the show. So every time we have an event, we're very thoughtful. Every time we go somewhere, go to an event, we're very thoughtful of hiring a videographer and having them come along and, and kind of follow us and put out content that way. So um, we figured out a long time ago that attention, this is a, a market of attention and, and, and we want to have the most attention. So that's the way we've been able to do it. Absolutely. So you have uh, an event you go to, it's a few hours long, like how many pieces of content do you typically get out of that? You know, so in the in the past, I we used to, they used to just deliver a video. Now what we do is we ask for the raw. So when you mm -hmm. guys, when you start, um, you know, hiring videographers, always ask for the raw, the raw video, because once you get that raw video, if you're noticing like some of the content I'm putting on Instagram, it's literally just the raw video with a trending sound and words over it. And those do amazing. So you don't actually have anyone edit the raw video after you get it. You just take it and cut it up and post it. So they yeah, so they edit it. So they'll deliver an edited reel. But then I have the raw content that's now used for B-roll and it's mm -hmm. used for these reels. Have you ever had pushback on that? I've had some people give me pushback like they don't want me to have the raw um, photos or or you know, I, 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 I haven't, but I think that I want to I'm going to uh, probably institute a contract when people work work with me, mm -hmm. um, because at the end of the day, especially once you have a big following like you do, you can really like you can really change that person's career and that person's life. Right. Like they might not change yours, but you can definitely change theirs because like the guy, one of the guys that we use. This guy's gotten so busy now, you know, he's brand new. We, we, we could barely. Everybody look. probably asks you, everyone probably asks you who you use. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Now everybody's putting out the same content I'm putting out because now he's working with all of them, you know? I have a local agent over here that, you know, he uses a certain videographer and I use a certain videographer and he, he was like, don't use that guy. He's like, you should use this guy. He's cheaper. He puts out a better. So I started using his videographer and then he ended up getting upset with that guy. Because mm -hmm. he was no longer, you know, he wasn't he wasn't as available because he kept yep. recommending them to people. So he ended up using mm -hmm. the guy that I was using originally. <laughs> <laughs> we switched. <laughs> exactly, dude. Yeah, exactly, yeah. man. Like they get so so you could really, you know, change the trajectory of their business. So um, a lot of times those people uh, won't mind giving you the raw. But I definitely think that you should put put it in the contract because essentially they own it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for new agents starting out, and that's kind of like the content that I put out. I, I feel like the stuff that gains the most traction are, you know, like if you were in my room right now, like I should mm -hmm. do a studio tour at some point, dude, because I got I got four SM7 or three SM7Bs, an MV7. I got I got big lights here. I got two mm -hmm. uh, aperture lights above me with varipoles ahead of me, two desks. I got all this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. You know, gimbals and cameras, Sony ZV-E1, Sony, um, <clears throat> Sony uh, A7 IV over there, second angle uh, sitting mm -hmm. over there. So it's like, but then some of the stuff that I put out, you know, I always gain the most traction when I show beginners how to create, you know, yes. using using their phone, using something that's not as expensive. And, and I also kind of like challenging myself to do that, too, because I don't like having a big old setup as an agent. 
You're walking around mm-hmm. showing houses. I can't carry around a big old gimbal with a with a camera on it to in vlog with a, you know, <laughs> it's it just doesn't work like that. So, you know, I have a lot. You know, like I said, I have the DJI Osmo Pocket Three, which I usually will take the gimbal off, and I can walk around, and no one even notices it. It's super discreet. Sometimes I'll set it like if I'm doing a training, like a live training or an event, mm-hmm. I'll set it in the back, and and I control it from my phone, and I have the mic here, and no one can even see it. So for you, you know, a new agent just getting into content creation, what do you recommend a new agent use or do to start creating content kind of more regularly? Yeah, man. So a couple of things. One, what you're touching on is called mass appeal, right? That content has more mass appeal because anybody can get in, right? When you start throwing in all the lights and all the cameras and all the other stuff, like they just get overwhelmed. So Mm -hmm. Um, keeping it simple just has more mass appeal. And I think that's why that content is is doing better. Um, mm-hmm. For me, dude, when I look back at the videos, because I was, if you look at my channel, you'll see probably once a week I drop a video that's, you know, high, super high production quality. But mm-hmm. when I go back and look at the videos that have done well, they've been shot from my iPhone. Yep. So what I would recommend is, uh, a good iPhone, a DJI gimbal, and good mics. The DJI mics. That's that, yeah. That's literally I, it. That's, I that's would say audio need. is more important than video. If you have crappy audio, it doesn't matter what your camera's looking like. Like yep. no one's gonna watch your video if they can't hear you. Yep. So audio is important. Cool. And you said DJI mics. Um, you know, and I use the DJI mic too. Um, yep. I also use the Rode Wireless Go mics, which is another good option. And the thing I like about the DJI mics is even if you don't connect it directly to your phone, because you can do it with Bluetooth, you can just mm-hmm. hit the button. And it, it's going to record and then you can just bring it in cap cut and just kind of line it up and sync it. And mm-hmm. you can do that 32 bit float, which might be a little bit over people's head. But it's you know, it's you can you can't mess up the audio. You can whisper, you can scream, whatever. It's not going to clip or mess anything up. So um I agree with you there. That DJI mic is pretty good. I should probably do a video on that one. Yep. Yeah. Thanks for the content yep. idea. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Again, all the stuff that we're talking about, right? Like just put yourself in. And and here's the thing. This is one thing I came to the realization of, man. There's more people trying to figure it out than that, than that have figured it out. There you go. Yeah. Everybody's trying to figure it out still, man. It doesn't There's matter. There's more who people you are. trying to figure it out. Yep. Everybody's trying to figure it out. You and I are still trying to figure it out. You know what Absolutely, I mean? Man. Absolutely, man. You have way more subs than me, and you reached out to me like, hey, I like what you're doing. You know what I mean? So, yeah. well, one, of the funniest, to one of the funniest things was I was at a, my, my company would hire these big coaches. I'm not going to name the coach, but some of these big coaches, national coaches, uh-huh. and stuff like that. And uh, to come speak at our events. And one time somebody was telling me that they're in the stall in the bathroom. And uh, one big, big coach, everybody knows his name, goes into the bathroom also, and he doesn't know anyone's in there. And he's looking at himself in the mirror doing affirmations. He's like, they love you. They love you. Like he's giving himself a pep talk before he goes out there. And I was like, dude, it doesn't matter who you are. You always have that feeling, man. You're always going to be like, okay. It's showtime, baby. It's time to go. And I've yeah. had top listing agents in my area say that they still get nervous sometimes doing listing appointments. They'll park around the corner. It's depending on the, you know, the the client in the in the home, yeah. you know, and they'll park around the corner and psych themselves out before they before they get to the appointment. So yeah, it doesn't really matter what level you're on. That that distance between where you are and where you want to go that never actually changes, man. It always stays yeah. the same. No matter how far you get, you always are, are are trying to to step up your game even more. And you know, when I started if video hungry, content. What's if that? you're hungry, if you're hungry. You got, and you got that killer in you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, when I started, it's funny because if you go back to some of the first because I started out like in my market, I was one of the first dudes to do like um, just like videos at listings. And mm. I started out using using my phone. And I remember mm-hmm. the first year I did it, I got 16 transactions from this because I was only when doing it. Yep. And and when I look back at those videos and how terrible they are, it's like comical, man. And some of them are yep. still up on, on one of my YouTube channels because it's, you know, now you can throw stuff in a cap cut template, you know, and it's going to spit out something better than I was working on this stuff for hours. You know what I mean? On my little Microsoft Surface is, Pro trying to put something together. But the thing is, the the terrible video is going to outperform the, outperform the video you never did any, any and all times. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. And since I was the only guy doing it, 
people yep. were amazed. I mean, I was getting like calls from people's like family members, like, man, we really like the video you did at such and such place. We'd like to hire you to sell our house. It's just an iPhone video on a gimbal. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That I tried to edit myself watching a Peter McKinnon uh, tutorial or something like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's, it's funny, man. It's funny how far we've gone. Let's talk a little bit about consistency. Cause do you use like an automatic scheduler or something like that? Or do you just post every day like yourself? On Instagram so, and all that. Yeah. So what's being a couple things. So all of my quotes, those are automatically scheduled. So all that's scheduled through my CRM. Um, so the quotes are going out through DealMaker. And then the the posts, like the reels, I'm actually posting those on um, on my phone. I'm scheduling them on my phone in the Instagram app. But then what happens is I use something called repurpose.io and Mm. then uh, Instagram is the trigger. So once it goes off on Instagram and it hits hits the platform, then it pushes it out to LinkedIn, Twitter and uh, YouTube shorts. So does it give you the is this is there the reels like TikTok logo on it or watermark? Nope, it it, it pulls it pulls the uh, logo off. That's good, man. I should I should ask yeah. you more about that. I use uh, later, and so I just go on there, and I'll you know I'll post everything, and it gives me like I can post it like four to five places at once, and schedule them yeah. all out, and, and I do it that way. But that's sounding like it might be old school, man, because anything with .dot io in it, we know that's AI. And so, right, right, <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So, so that, so that's that's how I'm doing. That's how I'm pushing it all out. Well, sp- speaking of AI. You know, with the uh, Sora coming out and all the new AI stuff, I don't know if you have seen the new uh, Chat GPT voice app. Um, I check every day to see if I have it. Time. Oh, you have it. So, like, I don't have the updated version of it yet. It hasn't come to me. So, like, every day okay. I check to see if it's updated because you know they got the new one where you can it, you're, you're like a FaceTime with with uh, AI. Is that the one you got, or you got the one you just talk to it? Oh no, I just, I just have the one you talk to. It's like my personal okay, assistant. Yeah. I just talk to it all day. Yeah. So I use that one. I I do use that one quite often. But they have a new one where it can it can see you and it can read your facial expressions and and oh, wow. it can it can be more empathetic to you based on the tone of your voice and and it can see other people in the room. It uses just the camera and the the audio input. So it's you know there's a lot of different things a lot of different things happening. But what do you see the future of you know real estate content creation? Do you see AI disrupting it at all? Do you see it you know what what do you see happening there? Oh, it's definitely disrupting it. Uh, right now, because like I mentioned, it's not, it's about quantity. And, Mm -hmm. you know, there's a, there's a, a huge gap when you try to put out quantity um, and quality, right? Especially when we don't have the budget, right? Like somebody like Ryan Serhant or any of these top, you know, top, you know, million, million plus uh, near agents, they can continue to put out quality because they have whole teams. Now you have solo agents like us because of AI being able to put out the same quantity and quality mm-hmm. as they are. So who do you think is going to win? No, I get you, man. I still can't let go. Like I have so much AI. I have so much AI stuff that I like, for instance, you mentioned Opus clip earlier. So like I'll throw a podcast episode in Opus just to see what it thinks is going to go viral. Then I go back to the episode and I edit it manually. Oh, wow. (laughs) I'm not leveraging it at all. And I do that because, you know, I'm real picky. Like I tried to, I tried to download, um, what's the one, uh, that edits your podcast episode for you. Um, Mm -hmm. dang, I can't remember the name of it now. Um, but but here's the thing, man, here's the thing with all that. Like I, I was, you know, I would do some of that stuff too, but it's really about speed to market. And especially with like YouTube, like, I don't know when that person, like the right person, or even if even if it's a client, right? The longer you hold on to that content, you might miss the person that was supposed to receive it. Yeah, no, I agree with you, man. I agree with so you. So that's why I'm trying to get it to market faster. Yeah, and, Opus will spit out 30 clips and then I'll, uh, what, what are the five I want to manually edit myself and make it look the way I want, have the captions pop in the way I want and all the yes, stuff, you know. And yes. then, you know, it, okay. it takes me like three hours to do it. So so what I'm doing is I'll put it in Opus and then I'm not using their captions, right? So I put it in Opus, I take the clips that they that they give me and then I'm throwing, I'm taking them off and then I'm throwing them in captions app. 
I was doing that too. And I, and also like if I wanted a 30 second clip, I was setting Opus to give me like a 90 second clip. So that way I could just cut out the chunk I wanted. Yes. Yes. I'm yeah, going to, so I'm going to get a lot that. in common, man. Yeah. So yeah. I've been taking 30 second clips from them. I'm going to, I'm going to lengthen those and then I'm cutting them up and I'm also repositioning stuff. Like if, if the hook was in the middle, I'm going to bring the hook to the front, then play, then play the video and put a nice little yeah. transition in there. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, man. So we're kind of doing the same thing. You know, yes. it's, 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 it's just being picky and not wanting to let go. It's autopod is the, the one that I, I had. And every time I had autopod, edit a podcast, I would watch it back and I wouldn't like it. It would have like, it'd have, it have it would have like my guest speaking and me like taking a drink of, of a Diet Coke or something. Like it wouldn't oh, wow. be like the shot I wanted, you know? So then I, right. I was like, all right, I'm, I'm not using this anymore. So then, you know, I got rid of it and then I brought it back. I used it again. I didn't like it again. And I ended up editing the podcast myself again. So I just got rid of it. Eventually that stuff will be, you know, it'll, it'll get a lot, a lot better. I'm sure. Do you do your own editing? I do my own editing on it on everything. Besides, oh, man. really, I, the only thing I don't edit is <laughs> if I have like a really high end real estate tour that I'm doing, I'll mm -hmm. let my videographer do it. So typically, um, like there's a lot of there's a lot of homes that I'll just hire a videographer and I'll have them edit and give me the video. But then I usually take that video and then I re-edit it into a reel, which I actually I have posted videos about doing that because. You know, the videographer, maybe it's just me being cheap, but a lot of times they, they charge just as much for the reel as they do the listing video. So I'm like, oh, I'm yeah, paying for this twice. And so right, I'll just right, right. take their video and I'll just chop it up into a reel. So I'll go in, I'll change the music, I'll make all the same cuts, I'll reposition everything so it's a reel. Um, and then if it's like a lower end listing where the marketing budget isn't there for hiring a, vi vi a videographer, I'll just go in there with my my phone or my Osmo or, or my cam one of my cameras and I'll just shoot the whole video and edit it myself. How much is video out there for a listing? Uh, it's probably, well, it just depends on who you hire. So some of, I know, I actually have a guy that's really affordable now. He, he does it for like 350 and, you know, okay, but typically perfect. it's like, it's usually it's like 600, like for a really, oh, wow. like if I was listing like a property that was say six, seven or six, 7,000 square feet and I wanted to have like a high end video, mm. you know, it'd probably be about 600 bucks. And then if I added a reel to it, it'd probably be another two, 300 bucks. So. Gotcha. Yeah, how about you guys out there in California? Well, first of all, our, our homes aren't the, aren't that big, you know. So I typically yeah. pay three to three to four hundred, but that's for picture and video. And uh, picture and, and video. I, yeah, I so was like so California was more expensive. Well, so I I do volume. So like I like I mentioned, I have a big group of agents, right? So um, just in my local market, I have about eighty agents in my group. So um, I have I basically have set rates with videographers and they all go to the same person. So we, uh, we, we, we have quantity. So I would maybe recommend getting with a group of folks and, uh, yeah. and setting up a deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we did have that, but I just didn't like the person that was doing it. I didn't think the quality was that good. And I had, I had one recently, it was like 5,500 square feet home maybe. And I paid 2000 for it, paid 2000 for, for photos, uh, dust, like, uh, night shots of the house with the lights on outside aerials, and uh, actually, I think I got a video from another company because it was going to be even more. I paid about oh, wow. two thousand for marketing on that one. Oh wow! Okay. So yeah, interesting, man. Interesting because you know me being from Minnesota, I was assumed like everything was like a billion times more expensive in California. That was just my yeah. assumption. No, so, you know, video since everybody's doing it, it's a little cheaper. Yeah, that I makes found sense. In some markets in some markets is more expensive because not many people are doing video. Yeah, but yeah, here, less people doing it here pretty affordable yeah everybody's doing it a lot of competition um do you got anything new you're working on on your youtube channel i know you just did the rebrand i know you're pushing out stuff every every day but it feels like you have you're like a planner you know what i mean it seems like you kind of know what your strategies are and what you're doing anything that you can mention that you're coming up with that that might be coming um more blog style videos more day in the life you know um i just started a team so i'm gonna start incorporating other people and their lessons you know so uh, i i I think I'm just going to take people on a journey with me. I just uh, I have an office here. And I'm getting the office all um, all done up. So I'm going to start, you know, recruiting and bringing more agents in here. So I'm just going to take people on a journey with me, man, and just show them that any, it, it, it's all possible. You know, yeah, there's a lo there's a local agent around here that and I'm not telling anyone to do this because, you know, it might not be considered safe, but he has a car mount kind of off to the on the passenger side and he has his Osmo mm -hmm. pocket three and he mounts it. 
And yes. when he's making all of his calls in his car between appointments, he records mm-hmm. everything just in case he has anything in there that he wants to post. And then he'll also mm-hmm. post, like, he'll just have rants. You know, he's get in the car and be like, this isn't, you know, he'll just talk about what just happened to him or whatever. And he's putting out that content. And he told me that that stuff is getting more views uh, and more engagement than the stuff that he has professionally done. Because he also yeah. shows stuff he has professionally here. edited. Same here, dude. Uh, yeah. People want authentic the, the authentic stuff. So anything you can do that's very authentic, dude, that's what's moving right now because people want real. They want it to be attainable, you know? All right, man. Hey, thank you so much for coming on, man. I appreciate you taking the time again. I'm a fan of your YouTube channel, man. So I'm going to continue watching and uh, seeing you grow. And maybe in the future, man, we'll have you back on. We can have a more detailed conversation about how you actually how you actually did it because I, I have no doubt that you're going to uh, grow pretty fast. Let's do it, man. Let's do it, man. And definitely appreciate your support, man. I'm glad that you reached out. Looking forward to connecting with you, man, and doing more together, dude. So yeah. keep doing what you're doing. Um, this is uh, this is not easy work, you know? And yes, you make it look effortless, but it's a lot of trial and error. And, you know, it's you taking action. So keep doing what you're doing, man. You're inspiring people. Um, a lot of them probably aren't speaking up, but uh you're inspiring people man to keep doing what you're doing all right man i appreciate it man yep have a good one you too